Dear friends, I am Dr. Bhupen Desai. I am practicing as a cardiologist in Mumbai for the last 29 years. I did my MD and DM from PGI Chandigarh and I am very much involved in the management of patients with heart failure. Heart failure is of special importance to me because now it is achieving a pandemic proportion. 1 to 2 percent of population of India is suffering from heart failure. So we need to give much more focus to the heart failure. Many of my doctor friends always ask me, my patient is stable on enalapril, my patient is stable on remipril, why should I change it to ARNI? As you all know, ARNI is one of the foundational therapy. You must change to ARNI even if your patient is stable on enalapril or any other pril. Because in paradigm heart failure study, it has been shown that compared to enalapril, the incidence of death has been reduced when the patient was switched over to ARNI. Need for hospitalization was also significantly reduced. All cause mortality was reduced by 16% as compared to enalapril. So this was head to head comparison between ARNI and enalapril and 16% reduction in all cause mortality. And their quality of life also definitely improves. So you must always switch on to ARNI even if your patient is stable. Yes, we all know that ARNI can be started in a OPD basis, patients who are very stable. That is how paradigm heart failure trial was also there. Most of the patients were in class 2. But then we see a lot of decompensated heart failure who are admitted to the ICU. You can straight away mobilize this patient in ICU, improve his symptoms. Once he is out of ICU, once he is stable, once his BP is well controlled and if he does not require any intravenous diuretic, then you can start ARNI even in hospitalized setting. There is no need to wait till for the first follow up or second follow up. You can start ARNI in the hospital setting only before patient is discharged. It is very safe. It has been shown that there are data, there are studies, there is a pioneer heart failure study which has shown that once you give ARNI, this patient do very well. <music> Emphatic yes. In paradigm heart failure study, which was a very big study, in this patient, patients were already on enalapril. They were stabilized on them and then they were switched over to ARNI. But here the question is, can we start it on de novo heart failure patient or not? Yes, there is no need to start enalapril first, stabilize him and then give it. You can straight away from day one give ARNI. All the recommendations of European Society of Cardiology and American College of Cardiology recommend that you should start ARNI de novo. There is no need to pre-treat them with enlapril and to make sure that they tolerate it. No, nothing like that. You can straight away give them ARNI. Even if the patient is very well stabilized on ACE inhibitor like enlapril, you should switch it over. Even if patient is stable, if patient is taking enlapril less than or equal to 10 mg, then you can start with 50 mg twice daily of ARNI. If patient is tolerating more than 10 mg of enlapril, then you can switch it over to 100 mg twice daily. So that is the dose equivalent. Less than 10 mg or equal to 10 mg, then switch it over to 50 mg RNA morning and evening. And if patient is on enlapril with more than 10 mg dose per day, then switch it over to 100 mg twice daily. The reasons for not achieving target dose of RNA is the fear in the mind of doctors. They always feel that ARNI will cause hypotension, ARNI will cause uh, renal failure, ARNI will cause hyperkalemia. That is not correct. In paradigm heart failure study, when they have compared ARNI head to head with enalapril, they have shown that, that the chances of renal failure and chances of hyperkalemia is comparatively less with ARNI as compared to enalapril. Though the chance of hypotension was slightly more with ARNI, but you can slowly build up the dose of ARNI, most of the patients do tolerate it well. Even if you give smaller dose, lesser dose, half dose, they do well. So you must give some dose of ARNI to patient who can tolerate it. And whenever this patient develops hypotension, do not panic. Look for other causes of hypotension. The most important cause of hypotension is too much of diuretic. In India, we are very fond of giving diuretic. Diuretic is not a disease modifying drug. It is just a drug for symptomatic relief. While ARNI is a disease modifying drug. ARNI will give him long life, ARNI will give him mortality benefit, 
Arnie will improve his quality of life. Arnie will prevent re-hospitalization. So try to reduce the dose of diuretics. Then look for other causes like nausea, vomiting, fever. They can all cause hypotension. So look for those things and do not blame Arnie for everything. As far as renal failure is concerned, decrease in EGFR is concerned, hyperkalemia is concerned, it is much less as compared to analaprid. But keep a watch on that. Repeatedly keep a watch on creatinine and potassium and keep adjusting the dose for it. The commonest cause of hyperkalemia in India is again too much of potassium containing diet including coconut water, fruit juice and all those things. So whenever patient has hyperkalemia, look for his diet and if diet is consisting of too much of potassium, then try to cut down those things including coconut water which is a very good source of high potassium. Yes, if your patient's blood pressure is more than 100 mg, 100 mm of mercury systolic, then you can give arnine. Start with a lower dose, start with 50 mg twice daily, build it up to 100 mg twice daily and try to achieve it to 200 mg twice daily. So even if the BP is borderline or BP is comparatively on the lesser side, arnine is much more beneficial compared to enalapril. Hypotension is one of the side effect of army, but as I told you before, you must look for other causes of hypotension. The most common cause as I told you is too much of diuretic. Try to cut down the diuretic, reduce the diuretic to minimum. If patient can tolerate, if patient has no signs of congestion, maybe you can totally stop, uh, totally stop uh, diuretic to prevent hypotension. And also look for other causes like vomiting, diarrhea and other things which are very common in India. Wait for some time. Please put this patient on ARNI before advising him device therapy. Device therapies are surgical procedures, they are invasive procedures and they cost a lot of money. If this patient was not on ARNI, give him a trial of ARNI. A good number of these patients will tolerate ARNI, their symptoms will improve, maybe their ejection fraction will also improve and probably the need for device will be totally excluded. He may not require device. So, First, give him a trial of ARNI for at least 6 months. If he improves, there is no need for device. And we have data to suggest that patients who were on ARNI, the need for device was significantly reduced. The first question, how many of my patients? More than 50% of my patients who come to me with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction has diabetes. If you take Indian registries like Kerala's Trivendram studies, which have shown that diabetes was as high as 55% in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction patients. So in India, in our own setting, diabetes is very common in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. While in paradigm heart failure studies and other international studies, diabetes was found to be ranging between 30 to 35%. So most of the heart failure patients with reduced ejection fraction do have diabetes. Diabetes is one of the important comorbidity in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fractions. ARNI has a lot of beneficial effect on diabetes. Though it is not an anti-diabetic agent, but patients who were on ARNI, they had a better reduction of HbA1c as compared to patients who were not on ARNI. So it has a mild anti-diabetic effect. Patients who were on ARNI required less amount of insulin. A good number of these patients were delayed to start insulin and some of them were totally omitted from the insulin. The requirement of oral hypoglycemic agent is also reduced. So, in a diabetic patient, not only ARNI improves their long term outcome, but it also improves their glycemic control. And these benefits are across the border, whether it is a pre diabetic or a diabetic or even normal glycemic patient, these benefits are additional benefit of ARNI when you treat them for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Diabetes will be better controlled. Now that's a very interesting question. There is very convincing data of ARNI in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. For heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, it was slightly controversial. There was a study called Paramount trial in which this drug was used and compared with enalapril. It was found that the symptomatic improvement is there, their 
NT pro BNP goes down, their left atrial size goes down, their NYHA class improves, but mortality benefit was not demonstrated. When it was compared with Walsartan, which is another ARB, when you compare ARNI with Walsartan head to head comparison, as was done in Paragon trial, and it was shown that it definitely reduces the need for heart failure hospitalization, and the hazard ratio is about 0.85. So, 15 percent reduction in heart failure hospitalization but mortality was not significantly reduced. There the hazard ratio was 0.95, so 5 percent reduction in mortality. But you must definitely try to use ARNI even in heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Now this is a guideline recommended therapy. Their mortality may not change much, but the need for hospitalization will decline, their left atrial size will decline, their NYHA class will improve, their NT pro BNP will decline, their quality of life will improve. So, you must give it and the maximum benefit comes in females with ejection fraction of 57 percent or less. So, those who are in mid range ejection fraction between 50 to 60 percent, there will be a definitely good benefit of ARNI when you give it to them in preference to any other ACE inhibitor or ARB. So, you must use it. Yes, you must give them because there is no other therapy for them. So, people who have ejection fraction of between 40 to 57 percent, you must always give ARNI because their quality of life will definitely improve. Mortality may or may not change, but quality of life will definitely improve. Contraindication for use is significant hypotension when the BP is less than 90, 95, do not use it. If there is a significant renal failure, then you have to be very, very careful. You may use it in paradigm heart failure trial. Even all the patients who had the ejection fraction, I mean who, whose EGFR was more than 30, they, they were given RNA and they tolerated very well. But it is a common sense, significant hypotension, significant renal failure, hyperkalemia, then you cannot use it. RNA cannot be combined with ACE inhibitor or it cannot be combined with Eliscarin. A patient is using lithium for some psychiatric treatment, then there is always a small possibility of lithium toxicity. If a female who is using ARNI and has been con taking oral contraceptive pills, then you have to be little careful. But by and large, there are no other major contraindications. It should not be combined with ACE inhibitor. Patient who is on ACE inhibitor, you have to give him a washout period of 36 hours before you start on ARNI. Otherwise, there are no major contraindications. What are the precautions you have to take? Look for angioedema, which is a very small number of patients do develop angioedema. Keep a watch on his blood pressure, potassium and creatinine. So, keep watch on three things, blood pressure, creatinine and high potassium. They can all be tackled, I mean just keep a watch on that, that is the only thing you have to remember. I would say in real world setting, Less than 5 percent patient will be in such situation that where you cannot use ARNI. More than 95 percent of patient you can use ARNI. And now there is a new recommendation that even in patient with significantly advanced renal disease, when EAGFR is even less than 30, you can use ARNI. Start with a low dose 50 milligram twice daily and build it up to 100 milligram. Do not go up to 200 milligram twice daily. In my real world practice, I have used ARNI in some of the patient who are on dialysis end stage renal disease and they have done well. Always keep a watch on potassium in these patients. How do we manage hyperkalemia with RNA? As I told you many a times we give it in a person whose EGFR is low and then it is always a risk to have hyperkalemia. But as I told you keep a watch on potassium, tell him to take Potassium, low diet, Indian diets are very high in potassium, coconut water, fruit juices, mangoes, potatoes, all these contain very high amount of potassium. So, you must uh, tell patient not to consume this short of food. Many a times we give diuretic and by reflex we prescribe potassium chloride syrup to prevent hypokalemia secondary to diuretic. Do not do that. If patient is on potassium supplement, stop it. Then. Even after doing this, if the potassium is very high, you can give him potassium binding resins rather than stopping ARNI because ARNI has a lot of mortality benefit. You should not stop ARNI. If potassium is borderline elevated, you continue with ARNI 
and give them potassium binding agents. In Europe, petiromer is now approved for the treatment of hyperkalemia, which is not available in India. So many of my European colleagues, even if potassium is high, they continue with Arni and give them petiromer, which is also a drug to reduce potassium. It will soon come to India. Now, that's a very interesting question and a very intelligent question. When you give Arni, patient's quality of life definitely improves. Ejection fraction also improves. Many of these patients will become almost normal or almost uh, come to mid-range ejection fraction. When you started Arni with ejection fraction of say less than 20% or so and you do repeated echoes over a period of few months or year, is ejection fraction comes to 40, 45 or even normal. Should we stop Arni? Patient has no symptoms, nothing. You should never stop Arni. Even if patient improves, never stop Arni because relapses are known to occur and sometimes they can be life-threatening. One of the manifestations of relapse could be sudden cardiac death. So never stop Arni. Those who have stopped Arni have a higher mortality. So even if your patient objectively or subjectively improves significantly with Arni, please do not stop. Continue with. Many a times we feel it's an expensive drug. Patient is better. Why to give Arni? Patient is normal now. Do not do that. That will be a big mistake. Mortality rates are high. Patient who stop Arni. The so-called heart failure with reduced ejection fraction or there is something called heart failure with improved ejection fraction. Patient who had ejection fraction was less than 35, you gave Arni, now ejection fraction is more than 40. Should we stop it? No, never stop it as I told you before. Never stop Arni regardless of what ejection fraction patient has achieved. Even if he has improved significantly, even if he has become normal, please do not stop Arni. You continue it lifelong. And finally, the last question people do ask me. What is my opinion about Arni? I would say this is the drug of this century. The outcome of heart failure has been significantly modified by the advent of Arni. This I would say one of the Nobel Prize winning drug. The significant reduction in mortality, significant reduction in the hospitalization, significant reduction in all cause mortality and a great improvement in quality of life. This is one of the drug of the century. Thank you so much.